Hello everybody and welcome uh, to the Stitch With Me. I have a dear friend. I promised I would do the Stitch With Me months ago. But uh, as we know, 2021 is kicking my butt. So um, yeah, I just have to try and do the best I can. I finally managed to get a somewhat decent setup to actually film because that's my biggest problem now. I am trying to save up uh, to invest in a tripod table clamp which then will do this a lot easier because then I can have that on my um, um, on my desktop where my laptop is. I just have to clean away like the keyboard and stuff. And then I can uh, have my Lowry stand at the desktop, like over it. That's what it is right now. Um, so under there you can see part of my desktop. So. This video is going to be how I do a uh, tent stitch on a full coverage project where I do parking. So as you can see, I do start this a little bit different than what I have previously done. Because suddenly I'm starting in the top right corner. I usually always start in the top right corner when I stitch. Well, what I found is that it's better to st start in the top right corner when you're doing 10 stitch. Um, and this is on a 32 count, two over one. I'm in the process of trying to go to one over one on most colors, but as you can see here, that's not good enough coverage. So I have to go over and make it two over two. So some colors will be two over two and some colors one over one, 10 stitching when it's on a 32 count. But the coverage looks amazing and uh, it's just too bulky, especially since this is a, a max color version. So there is a lot of colors as you can see. But why do I start in the top right corner? And the reason is uh, when I do 10 stitch to not get too confused, I always do the stitch like I would my first X. So I go from the bottom left to the top right. And that's a 10 stitch or a half stitch. And as you can see, the only parts on the square that is affected is this part and this part. And when I do, main reason I do parking and don't like cross countrying is because I like my stitches to look neat. And the easiest way for me that I think personally is to always try and kind of come up in an empty or almost empty hole. What I mean by that is that there's no stitch already going here. When you do full cross, that's most of the time impossible. So having just one floss in that hole, no more than two is the best. And then go down in the hole where there already is a stitch. That will also make, make it so that the stitch that was above here, when you go down, it will be corrected if it was a little bit wonky. Because it uh, the floss pulls that stitch down so it looks neater. And with 10 stitching, you can always come up in an empty hole if you want to without making a big fuss about it. Um, because when you have done this stitch, come up here, no other uh, 
color or stitch is gonna come up in this hole if you always go from the bottom left to the top right. So what this means is if I do the stitch right here, uh, since this is a, I just did draw up two 10 by 10 grids. So when I have done this stitch right here, since there's no, supposed to be no stitches above, I can go ahead and I can do all of these without problem. And now on the next row, I can do these stitches here without any problem because all of them is in a single place. But what I also can do without messing up too much, the way I stitch, having like stitches I have to work around, I can do this stitch because um, this stitch right here is done. So I come up in an empty hole and I go down in a hole where there already is a stitch. And that's the main thing about me doing 10 stitching is that mainly I try to go uh, in a snake method just because when you do half stitches, the floss gets to one end and then you have to get it back somehow. So it, the snake method naturally becomes uh, a good way. But I don't strictly follow it. I will do some alterations if I feel like it, basically. So, and this means, as you can see, you can actually feather a pretty good amount without it being a problem. Because when I do this stitch here, I come up in an empty place and I, since there isn't a stitch above, I will go down in an empty space. But if I had done this stitch, like this stitch, come up in an empty hole, go down in a, where there already is a stitch. So you get a nice feathering where I never have to come up in a hole where there is a floss. I can always come up in an empty hole and go down uh, where there is a stitch. Um, so that's why I start at the top right part of uh, the pattern. Um, so, yeah, let's get to stitching and I can try and show you a little bit better uh, with stitching. So I just have to find my pattern keeper. And um, this one, I'm, I'm not always sticking to a 10 by 10 block, usually. Um, like here, I will do a 20 by 20 wide, just because the 32 count is so small that it doesn't bother me just doing 10 by 10. But at the same time, I do, I do what I feel like doing. And here is a good example of where I have been feathering a lot out. And when I come to do these stitches, I can always come up in an empty hole without... Because for me, if I have to come up in a hole where there is a stitch, especially on 32 count, that will mess up my stitches big time. So... Trying to avoid that. And since my I got a new phone, <laughs> I actually have to put in my shortcuts. So what I usually do, double click on a single stitch will search and highlight the symbols. 
A double click on a single stitch will park in the lower left corner. And double click on a selection, finish or frog stitch. That's usually the settings I have. Um, there's a new update in Pattern Keeper. If you haven't used this app, you should try it out. It's called Pattern Keeper. So, yeah. Because now, I can just double tap and that stitch will become highlighted easily for me. So, yeah. we'll see how long I can sit and stitch with you today because um, sitting here in my office chair, I don't have a place to rest my hands when stitching. So usually, um, with my illness, I can't I can't do too much before it becomes an issue. So what I am going to do now you can see how I'm doing it when I'm going from one to two strands. So all of what I have parked is two strands in this section. So I will just take the one strand and then I will go down and park it where it's supposed to be parked. That's down here. And then this second color, if I had found this color in any of the other um, areas close by, like the next uh, column, I would park it there. And sometimes I will do this stitch with this floss also. Uh, especially now when I'm gonna end it. So what I then do is I will go a little bit down and do a little stitch like this. And that's going to be cut away when I'm done. And when I do this little stitch, I don't know if you can see it, zoom in, but here is an example, a stitch like that, um, like this. Uh, I know that's a parked floss. So when I have stitched these rows down, I know I can go ahead and cut these stitches. Like these ones, I could already have done if I wanted to. And I think I'm gonna do that right now. So I just take my needle, pull these up, and cut them away. And that's really how I have to start and end my floss because I really don't know a better way, especially when I'm doing or going to do one over one. When I did it over with two strands, like I can start with the loop method. 
Um, so I always forget myself. Stitching. So I take the one strand first. Do the stitches I need to do. And the thing with this method is that um, I don't stick to one row. Like right now, I have a stitch with this color here. So I will just go ahead and do it because there's already a stitch done right there and the same with this one there is a stitch to the top right and there's a stitch right above so then I will do it um, the only time I don't do the a stitch above is if I'm gonna be um, oh, what's the word um, be feathering the edges. And sometimes in all of this, it can be hard to, to figure out where you're supposed to park the boss. Because I have And this is easier when I have gotten the hang of it because then I know that this floss is that symbol and that floss is that symbol. So it's a little bit easier to do the parking. So that's usually why I like to stitch on one project for a longer time because then I suddenly begin to remember what symbol belonged to what color, making the parking easier. So. This one is going to be parked right there. And this one, I'm going to park right under here. I don't do this stitch because the stitch to the top right isn't done. So I will park it and I will stitch it on the next row. So this takes a lot longer than usual since I'm in the process of um, going from one from two strands to one strand. This one I'm just gonna stitch with the two strands because the length is so short I'm gonna end it anyway. So sometimes I do that little stitch on the diagonally and sometimes I do it in a straight line. The most important thing for me is that I do something to make it look different from the park threads. And now... So this stitch is a little bit over to into the other 10 by 10 square, but I know that I'm going to use the color over here and this whole doing one strand 
instead of two is just me trying to keep this project alive. Because if this doesn't work, if I'm not happy with it going from two to one strands, then I'm going to have to restart it on a different type of fabric. Because there, with this many colors, it's just, it doesn't work out well. And before I go, I need to remember to take the other. Other strand of that color I just used and you're going to be parked over here the only positive thing with so many colors so much confetti is that um, my floss is almost never parked in the wrong spot um, just because I have so many reference points. So. When I do the parking. Because I use what I already have stitched. And the parked floss. That I know what type of. Um, symbol it is. Like when I'm 100% sure. And use it as reference points. And now, this one is going to be parked pretty close by, so. Right over there, like that. Here's one that I already did make into one strand. I think it's the one of the first one I did. And this section what you're doing with me right now, it's it's confetti heavy even for this project. Um just saying. <laughs> So here is an example what I mean with I usually end up finding the floss that is parked in the wrong spot pretty easy like this one because there's just so much going on. So this one was parked in the wrong spot one row too high. So then I just move all of them one row down.
here we have another color that I can only find down. So one of the strands is going to be stitched and parked. Remember the earlier on we had one really far down I parked? Now I can use that as a reference point for this one. takes too long putting the flosses away so instead I just the notepad I have I'm just writing down the color and I will put them back where they belong after this stitch with me so I know a lot of people is um, been asking about how the issue with the rats are going uh, if you don't know we have had rats in our walls so um and we had to do like a Tearing, we had to tear down a lot of walls and stuff. So the walls are still not fixed. Um, because they, they as the insurance company, prioritize like getting the walls ripped down. Uh, to kind of deal with the issue right away. But they don't prioritize coming to fix that issue. Uh, <laughs> and that means they still haven't come to fix the walls. Um, so things are a little bit... I don't know, chaotic. Um, so, the, um, and we we can't say for sure that the rat issue is fixed um, yet. Uh, that's because in the summertime, the rat starts spring summer the rat starts to migrate out and are out all the time they don't usually uh, go into houses um so Um, since they don't go into houses, we can't know for sure that they won't come into the house yet. Uh, if they manage to find a way again or not. Um, so now it's, it's autumn, it's the beginning of autumn. When it gets closer to winter time and in the winter then we will know for sure if uh, what we have done to try and get rid of the problem uh, that's um, that's when we will know that 
so until then we just have to wait and see we hope that it's like fully <laughs> under control now but really we we can't we can't tell um, because now they usually wouldn't come in or come in inside the house So that's why I haven't said too much about it in my updates, because I really don't know. So, but when winter comes around, it's going to be interesting to see if any rats find their way inside the house. So yeah, that's, that's really all I can say about that problem. We don't know. So, but uh, we hope they soon will come and fix the walls. Like the walls, we have made sure that the walls are, it's just the inside that the walls are down. And we really do hope that um, did I just ugh, I just highlighted the wrong the wrong floss. Which means one of the colors I just parked is in the wrong spot because it's the wrong color. so weird the moment you pull out the camera you do all kinds of mistakes that you never have done before i don't know why it's it's just the way it is apparently i think it's maybe because i don't pay too much attention to the stitching and this really is a project that needs a lot of attention. So, yeah. I probably should try and pay more attention to the actual stitching instead of talking. have a new, new, new color, one I don't have on my floss rings. So then I have to go 
to my bobbin box. I have a double-sided bobbin box, which works like a monster set. So luckily, usually I can find the bobbins there. Lately, I have been bad about pulling them out and not placing them back, and instead put it um putting the bobbins in the project bags of the project I was working on which is silly to do but I have so this time I'm gonna start a little bit different and that's because I have several of these stitches in a row so then I go one row higher than where I'm supposed to start that is because then the floss on the back back side is a little bit on the diagonal making it easier to catch when I then go down and come up. So if I have two ten stitches or half stitches in a row then I can do this method and this is the method I use when I do full crosses uh, when I do one over one. Um, so, but I can't do it if it's just one stitch because you kind of have to go down and when you come up, that's when you trap the floss underneath that lies diagonal because then there is a straight stitch like this capturing that uh, floss. And when I go down here, the floss automatically just pulls it down with it. If it doesn't pull it down, then I will just wiggle the floss around like this and it usually goes down. And as you can see, we had a little section where I could do more than just one stitch. But Then we have a floss that is supposed to be underneath again. And I'm, f I'm fairly confident that it, the floss is like one stitch too high most of the time. Uh, that has to do with Sometimes when I lift the floss, uh, sometimes it looks like it's one stitch higher than what it is uh, on the weave. So. But it's not a big problem. Apparently, it's the place where I have to find a lot of new floss. I think it's because uh, this section right here is some greenery on the um, castle, on the castle wall. So, I think I can... If I go to the mock-up on my pattern keeper. So this is the section we're working in. So you can see this green part right here. I'm pretty sure that's where we are right here. So sorry it's not picking up too well. Um, so that's the mock-up from pattern keeper. Telling how it's uh, going to look. And that means a lot of new 
lengths of floss going on. And the problem with my monster set is that I cut the floss to be double length. So now that I only need one length, I have to take the floss off, cut it in half, put one back on the bobbin <laughs> before I can start the first one. Because if I don't do this, I'm going to end up not knowing which floss is what if I just throw it in a pile or something. Okay. not always easy finding a place to start the floss to the side when there are so many colors that have been ended and started again. right out. I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna go down here out on the side and I'm gonna go up and do this stitch. This is like after the edge of what I'm supposed to be stitching so I know that it's a floss that's gonna be cut away because it's not supposed to be there and I'm gonna do it like this so, and if this doesn't look good when I have got everything over to one strand. Uh, if it doesn't look good enough, then I'm gonna go back to trying to do full crosses on this one because I still have the section that I started uh, one over one full cross. I haven't ripped it out yet. So yeah. I think we're gonna end it here for today because it's almost uh, 45 minutes so yeah I did 35 10 stitches <laughs> yeah it, it usually goes slow this one I usually get about a hundred stitches right uh, under one hour of stitching when it's this confetti heavy. it Now, since it's on camera, it's a bad angle and stuff like that. It takes a little bit extra time. Um, so yeah, it, um, it is what it is. So, but it's fairly bulky. Especially in this section right here, it's like super dense. It's because there's so much confetti going on. So yeah, there's a um, big chance I'm gonna have to rip this part out and just continue the one over one section. So, but it looks amazing. It just doesn't feel amazing. And if we can turn this around, there you can see the back side. It's um, pretty confetti heavy. <laughs> I hope you can see it because right now 
I can't see what um, the screen was showing you. So that was my little stitch with me for today. I hope you understood why I started in the top right corner. Um, as I said, it's because then I can do feathering and I can always come up in a hole that is empty. Um, and I like that because it makes my stitches look neater and cleaner. And um, for some reason, uh, when I do, especially if I do, because I do the same method just starting in the other corner when I do full crosses the back looks amazing I don't know why it just does <laughs> so so yeah uh thank you for joining me I hope you enjoyed and uh hopefully I will get the time to come back with a real floss tube update so I will see you later goodbye everyone